That's why it's called Bass Face. What's up guys, it's Will from EDM Tips, my new mug. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make bass house like Julian Jordan and Stamped Records. And over the last few weeks, I've been doing these in the style of genres and they've been going down so well. You can download all of the project files from each of them as well. Check them out. They are getting a lot of views and people are loving them. You can download the project and all the samples below this video as well, so don't forget to do that. So we will be covering the kick and the drums. We will be covering the big fat chopped up bass. We will be covering brass stabs and we're going to be covering vocals, synth riff, mixing. Oh man, there's a lot to get through. And if you dig, give me a like, subscribe to my channel. And without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, so I'm going to do another one take Billio. Now, because of this genre and the importance of layering, the importance of sound design, I'm actually not doing this from scratch. I'm going to kind of reverse engineer this idea that I came with. Otherwise, you'd be watching me for like two hours um, finding all the sounds. So the first thing to consider about this kind of music, this bass house kind of future house hybrid is it's all about the vibe. So if you're listening to artists like Julian Jordan and the like, then, you know, on STMPD records, which I was called stamped, then obviously there's really high energy when the drop hits. It's, it's going a bit crazy. There's lots of interplay between bass sounds. There's lots of interplay between different stabs as well. Um, that's really important on this. So let's go through it step by step. I'm just gonna turn everything off and then this is the order that I actually produced this little idea. So uh, let's do it that way. So first is the tempo, 126. It's easy enough to find out the tempo of a particular genre. So that's what we're gonna be doing in today. I'm gonna call it bass face because you know, bass face. So it is kind of built in two sections. You've got the A section of the drop and the B section of the drop. And today we're just focusing on the drop because that's kind of the main idea of the track. And then obviously there's a break. But if you let me know in the comments below, I'll also make a break version of this track as well. So let me know in the comments if you want that. Say yes. OK, so the first thing to do after we've realize that there are two parts. So we will just kind of give that a little label. You don't need to do this, of course, but um, I'm just going to call that B and then this is A. So we know these are going to be slightly different. Right. So the kick, choose a really nice, powerful kick. I found mine on splice, just programmed it in. And this is what I've done. I've gone to the classic mode in the sampler or the simpler, and I've done full sustain and a tiny bit of release. And that is so that when this MIDI note finishes, the actual sound finishes. If you've got it on full release, then the kick is actually going to drag on a bit further. And we need this to be super tight, super tight editing. So that's the kick, nice and simple, as you'd expect. So after that, we are choosing a clap. I will go into my drums. I like to work with drum rack. I will just kind of grab all of those and then mute them for the time being. OK, that didn't work. So I will just mute them manually. So the main clap is a 909 dance clap, which I always use or I often use when I'm producing house. And what I've done is I've reduced the sustain and release. And made it really snappy with this, just the decay. And then I've added a bit of saturation to fatten it up. It's kind of adding volume as much as anything, but it's just fattening up that a tiny bit. So here is what we've got so far. Nothing fancy, right? But that is what the bass line is going to be interplaying in between. Now, the bass line is the hardest thing to do in a track like this because you've got lots of different bass sounds that have to interplay with each other. So let's get to it. This is how you can do it more easily. So you can see in my bass section, I've got quite a few different layers. Now, the easiest way to do this is I'm just going to put this in the central, in the center. Um, the easiest way to do this is to just choose one bass sound at first. So it might be this one, which again, I found on Splice. Um, you can use a synth for this, but I'm using a sampler. I like to use samples for stuff like this because it's easy to swap them out. So if you tap out the bass line or the bass note, 
uh, the bass pattern rather. When your kick is playing, let's just mute these clips. So that's pretty much what I've done, very simple. But then after you've done that, you can start finding other bass sounds to layer over it. I'm just gonna loop this first part. So this is what I have just written. And what I've done is I've gone onto Splice to find these sounds and I've just typed in bass. But the thing is when you find a bass sound that you like in Splice, so I'll, I'll give an example here. So let's listen to this bass shot in Splice. Uh, let's look for a bass, future house bass kind of sound. You can hear they, they're on different notes. Like they're not all tuned to C. Like this one's on um, G for instance. So we've got bass shot 24. I'll just turn this back to zero. So when I loaded this in initially, uh, come back, come back to me. So when I loaded this into the sampler or the simpler in Ableton, this is what it sounded like. So this bass and this one aren't tuned. Now the way you get around that, and as I said, that's because these samples are done in different keys when they've been sampled. So we can see that like some of them are in A, some of them are in C. So the way that you can tune these quickly is to get a channel with a grand piano, just your stock plugin, Ableton, or whichever door you're using. And then if you play that sound, that is C. And what I do is I go to the sound I want to tune and hit the same notes on the keyboard. Then I go into transpose and I move it until it's the same as this. So we can hear that's the same now, note now. So that means that is now tuned to middle C. And I did that with this bass sound. I did that with this one and this one because they were all sampled at different on different notes. So now we've got these three samples. So that's one. And I've just taken out the low end because I've got a se separate sub bass track. And a third bass which isn't so much a bass as much as a top texture. So then all together, and if we pan this one left and, and pan this one right, we've got a nice wide layered bass. And then we add the sub bass. And the beauty of having a different sub bass is that you can, you don't have to hit exactly the same note. So let's hear how that sounds with the kick and with the clap. This has got no mixing. Uh, oh, well, actually, no, as I took out some of the low end of these two bases. And then I added to switch things up at the end of the bar. Just a silly little kind of intro to uh, shake things up a bit. Now, these brass sounds, this is a huge part of this bass house type sound. Again, I got these on Splice. I just went and no, I'm not uh, like affiliated with Splice at all. It's just a really great tool. Um, so I just put in brass like this and you want to choose one shots. Again, it doesn't matter what key it's in because I've shown you how you can tune it. But I've actually dropped these in as audio. And the reason I've done that is so I've added a, a little bit of an attack at the beginning. And that's to give it that sucking sidechain pump sound. And you could do that with a sidechain compressor, compressor or LFO tool, but I was doing this quickly. So I've got that lovely deep sound. And I've actually tuned it using the same method as using the grand piano. But I just tuned it by taking the transpose down in the audio rather than on a sampler. And I chose Pro Complex Pro as the warp 
algorithm and I took the four months right down as well. So this is what it was originally. So I wanted to tune that to my track, which is an A. You can see it's in A because my bass line is in A. It's pretty much all A. And I'm being really sharp with the edits, as you can see. So this uh, brass sound doesn't overlap with my sub bass. And this is really important for keeping a clean bass house type sound because there are so many little edits and the final master is really loud, so you don't want to be muddying up the frequencies. Now I've layered this with another brass sound, but it's much higher. You know, there's not much bass in there, but it's quite big. You know, it's got a nice big uh, reverb sound. So all together, this is what our bass and brass sounds like with the kick and the clap. So you can already hear it starting to get that bass house sound. And as I said, this is where you want to spend a bit of time, well actually the most amount of time, on getting them to interplay with each other and get picking the right sounds as well, it's really important. And you can see here, I've done a reverse sound. <clears throat> it's the same horn and I've just pressed reverse on it basically to give it a bit of an epic sound. Lots of little reverses, and I do that with the drums as well, which I'm going to show you very shortly. So this is where we are so far, and I'm going to go on to the next thing I need to show you. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a room reverb, which I've done here. I've just used Ableton stock reverb and then just boosted it a bit because these seem to kind of come out a bit quiet for some reason. And I'm just gonna add some to the main clap. And I've done that in the drum machine. If you open up this IO thing, uh, you can create return train and then assign that to your global auxiliary channels. And then you can dial in a certain amount of reverb for each separate drum, which I, I, I think that's a great feature. Then you can just turn it off again and turn send on and there are the controls. So <clears throat> this is what the clap sounds like with no reverb. And this is with some room reverb. So just wider, but it's a very short tight reverb. And I can send other elements to that same reverb to make it gel together too. See that's Clipping a bit, it's a bit naughty. I should actually take everything down. Um, so I've got plenty of headroom on the master channel. So I'm not going to do that because I'm feeling naughty and I want to get this done ASAP for you. Cool, okay, so we've got the clap with the reverb. Next is the rest of the percussion. And like, I can't stress the importance of getting the initial rhythm down on one bass line first or one bass instrument first because it's so much easier to then break it out into different areas and kind of do little flourishes like this but make things simple for yourself build it from the ground up okay and here is our other percussion so i've added some toms i think they're from a vengeance sample pack so let's turn those on. And these are just to interplay with the kick and the bass as well. And then I have got something else going on. I've got this crash sound, which is really quiet and I've rolled off all of the low frequencies. And this is just to give the kick more um, presence. And then on all of the kicks that don't have the crash, I've put a little, um, oh no, including the one with the ca crash, I've put a ride symbol, which is really quiet. So let's just loop that tiny bit and we'll turn the clap off. So you can hear how quiet that ride symbol is. But again, it just gives more presence to the kick. 
and So it's already taking shape. Now you might notice there's a bit of a swing to this track and that I did by just choosing a groove setting. You've got, you can do this in Logic and in FL Studio as well as Ableton, but I've chosen M MPC 16th Swing 64. I just dragged that onto my drums. I've dragged that onto my basses. It's important to drag it onto every single MIDI clip that you have to make sure they've all got the same groove. And I've just toned down the timing a little bit. So this is what it sounded like with no groove. And this is with lots of groove. So it's got a bit more of a skip to it. Uh, but I settled at 60%. I thought that sounded quite good. Um, and I've got this little drum intro here um, just to give more interest as well. That da, 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 da. Very, very quiet, very subtle. But that is what this genre is all about. These little tweaks, these little subtle things. Um, I've also got a reverse clap, which I always use. I love reverse claps. So, okay, you can't hear it unless it's, oh yeah, that's because it's muted. Nice one. So I've just got this reverse clap. So it kind of sucks into the clap. Um, okay. And next I have got a kind of the shuffle drums, which are the main drums, if you will. I, I drop the kick here just for a little bit of um, interest in the tune because it's full of little one shot stabs and stuff like that, which you'll see very shortly. But uh, now I can turn these two hats on and you can see I've got an open hat and a closed hat. So when they come in, it sounds like this. And for this little intro, I just took everything out apart from the ride cymbals, the rev clap, and my little intro, and the normal clap. And I kept the kick going. And then what I did was this brass hit that we heard earlier at the beginning of every other bar, that just to give it some real size. At the end of the second um, bar, or I can't, at the end of, one, two, three, four, eight bars, I think. I've just gone in and I've put four of them in a row and each one I'm taking down in pitch with the transpose that we looked at earlier with the warp on so it stays the same length and then that's just a cool little intro. And then it takes us back. Cool, so, okay, on to the next bit. Now we are going to the riff. Now this is a kind of distorted Julian Jordan type high riff, and I wanted to show you how simple it's to, it is to do just with pretty much any sound. Actually, the, the reason I've done it with pretty much any sound is because I've got this Isotope Trash um, distortion plugin. So this is the only plugin I'm using today that isn't a stock Ableton plugin, but it's wicked. It's really good for giving a, a, a big grungy sound. So I'll turn off Isotope and let's listen to my riff. And the way I've done that is this is an A minor still which is easy to use because it's it's all the white notes, but I've got this accidental here, which is absolutely fine. You can do that. And the way I've created this sound, this is a really old school uh, synth sample I've had for like 20 years. I got it from a future music uh, cover disc, I think. So that's the sound. And what I've done is I loaded it into a simpler, but you, yeah, you can use any sampler for this. And I made it monophonic. Where did I make it? Yeah, voices one. And I've 
I've added some glide, some portamento basically. So I can only have one note playing at once. But when you go to the other note, it glides between them. And I did that by turning on glide and then adjusting the time slightly. And here I've overlapped the notes. So it forces it to glide from that one to that one, then back down again. Because if I don't, then it just will re-trigger this new note, which, which we don't want. So this is with no glide, which isn't cool, but that is cool. Okay, then I've stuck on this isotope trash. You don't need to do this. I just thought it sounded cool, so I put this on. And it's basically a pretty powerful distortion unit. And I just chose one of the presets just to give it more character. And actually what I'd do after here, I'd put an EQ on there just to make sure I don't have any low end frequencies I don't need, of which there are many. And I've duplicated that riff and Oh, again, okay, I used a serum here, but honestly, guys, it doesn't matter. You don't need to use serum. Just use the Ableton sampler, chuck another sample in. I've got this tiny little bleep. You know, you don't need any fancy synth to make a noise like this. I've added another isotope trash, which just gives it some grit. And I'll just make sure that the low end's taken out there as well. So it's got lots of harmonics, and I think actually in this patch, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, I think in this patch, one of the waves is actually a fifth of the other. Hmm, they don't look like they are. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just harmonics from the isotope trash. But this is my layered uh, riff. So nothing fancy, but then that is made to interplay with all the sounds that we have so far as well. So let's have a listen. Okay, now onto the next fun bit, our little vocal stabs and whatnot. I've collected loads over the years. Um, Oh, actually, this isn't a vocal. I put this in. This is an old so sound I made years ago. It's like a hoover, um, like a rave hoover sound. Let's have a listen. And again, you can see super hard edit there. And these sounds often have their own reverb baked in, which gives them a kind of a different space from the other sounds. And that can be that is actually desirable in this genre of music. And I've done these hard edits here. So let's listen with that on. Just gives it a ravey sound. And then I've got this uh, couple of vocal samples. Let's have a listen to this one. Just a little woo. And then this old one of some guy saying fresh. Fresh. Like from a record. And that's it. As simple as that. And then I've got this that I stole from a record called Rip Groove by Double 99. I still love that record. And I'm sure they stole the little sample from somewhere as well. It's like a little garage sound sample. And it's as simple as that. So all together, it sounds like this. And then we go into the B section. Fresh. And all I've done here is I'd actually want to do more work on this. It needs a bit of work, but all I've done is I've dropped the riff down. So it goes from this down to this. That's such a badass sound. And the other thing I've added is this siren sound. And I'll show you how I made this really quickly. I wanted to do this using any sound that you find because it's all about the manipulation in the sampler. 
So I'll just do it from scratch actually to show you because yeah, I want I want to show you how to do this. So this is the sound I've got. It's a bit stupid really, but I wanted a siren sound to really kind of pump stuff up. So I'm just going to do this one from scratch actually. So we'll delete that and I'm going to load in a simpler. I'm going to have to change that to a sampler though because the sampler has more control. And then I'm just going to go into any like synths sample. I, I want it quite long though, sustained. Uh, so this is completely different from the one that was loaded in, but I'm going to create a uh, alarm kind of siren sound now. Okay, so first I'm going to add some. Well, I need to change it to a sampler, then I'm going to go and edit the pitch with a pitch envelope. So this works in the same way that an ADSR amp envelope works, except we're doing it with the pitch rather than rather than the amplitude. So you can hear it's kind of got that lasery sound. Leap. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's have a listen. So I'll need to take that up. I'll turn the EQ on, get rid of some of the bass. And I've also applied the same groove to that pattern that I've done in. Let's have a listen. Again, that could do with more work, but you can hear it just gives that siren sound. I might also put some room reverb on there. Or I might even add a little bit of delay uh, just to give it some width. Ping pong. No feedback. And for the second part of it, you could. So for that first beat, um, before everything comes in, it's like a little moment there. Um, I would, for the second one, I could put it up an octave. But that would be really back in the mix there. And I'd actually make it sound good instead of crap which it sounds at the moment, but it's just to give you an idea. Anyway, as I was saying, Fresh. at this little pause here, I've taken out the kick, taken out all the drums, apart from the reverse clap, which leads into that first clap, and then I've moved the crash to hit on that first kick, because the, well, it's it would normally be the second kick, but I've removed it. Fresh. And then the last touch I've added is just this little drum intro just to layer on. Just another one of those little layers that give it, um, that gives it sorry, more um, energy and more interest. So let's have a listen. In fact, no, let's mix it a bit. Let's, let's do a little bit of mixing because I want this to sound fat as, mate. So. First thing I'm going to do is my kick and my bass. As you can see, I've already rolled off the low end on, as I said, these two side basses because you don't want bass frequencies below about 100 hertz on the side channels. Um, and then I've got this bass, which is more for texture, and my sub bass. 
quite nice and fat. And we can leave the low frequencies in there because that's that's the sub bass. So what I might do at this point is I probably group or root the kick and the bass together into one place. Um, Now, what I'd probably actually first do is add something like an LFO to tool or a side chain compressor to the bass uh, to make sure it's ducking out the way of the kick. Just to let the kick breathe through a bit. And then again, I'm just going to be using stock plugins. So I'm going to put the glue compressor on here. To gel them together a bit. I might even add a little bit of saturation before that, might not be needed. but it's a bit loud and now let's bring the drums in we've got that clap is distorting uh, not distorting clipping slightly but given the fact I'm feeling lazy today, I'm just going to slap a limiter on the end of the clap just to rein in that tiny transient. Oh, okay, it's because it's above there. So instead of distorting here on the clap channel it's being driven into a very slight limiter I'm gonna put a limiter there as well just to catch any stray ones usually I wouldn't do this this isn't good practice guys I would bring everything down to zero then I would mix up from zero making sure that I've got about 6 dB on of headroom on the master fader um, but I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. You get the score. You get the deal. Let's do it. That's cool. I think that needs a bit more beef. That Hoover sound. And again, I'd probably add the LFO tool on there. Let's tone it down a bit. Tone it back a bit. And as I said, you can use a sidechain compressor for there where you would take the compressor, route the kick to it, or use a sidechain trigger. I wanted to do this um, mostly in Ableton plugins, but I'm using the LFO tool because it's, it's my preferred tool. But you can do it with just the stock plugins. I've already done a bit of EQ here to get rid of the unwanted low end. Tell you what, this needs a bit of the Haas effect, so I'm going to put a delay on there. I want this this rip groove sound to be really loud, uh, wide. So I've chosen a delay. I'm going to choose ping pong, and then I'm going to turn it to mono using my mono switch, uh, which you can find out about there or there. Uh, how many minutes is that into it? 52. Okay, I'll remember to put the link this time. Minimum feedback. And now when we switch back to stereo. It's really wide. So this is without it. Completely mono. And this is with the house effect. So now let's have a listen.
That's why it's called Bass Space. I actually don't like the bass pump on the horns. So I'm actually going to just apply it to the sub bass to make sure that stays out the way of the kick because that's the most important. And I'll probably group the two scream riffs together. Maybe add a bit of uh, bit crushing on the screen to make it even grittier. You could even automate that like an absolute bad boy. There you have it guys, as I said, if you want me to create the break and the build for this tune, tweak it a bit more, let me know in the comments below, give me a yes boy, and stay safe, stay healthy, you can download the project for free below this video, again if you like it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, and until next time, cheers and happy producing. Buckle, buckle.